on the everlasting arm. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind. Leaning on the everlasting arm. <laughs> For my brothers and my sisters, 
Too many churches are closing up their doors and not even attempting to try to go back. Pastors are leaving churches because they don't want to be there anymore. But thanks be to God, he's given us this place, this branch of Zion, and has given us our health and our strength. And so we ought to give God all of the praise. Amen? We thank God for the opportunity. We're going to ask the choir to get ready to come in song, and after they have come in song, we are going to go into our morning prayer, and after our morning prayer, we're going to have another song uh, from the choir, and then uh, we're going to have our scripture. Come on, choir, give God the glory and the honor. Amen? Amen.
where it is that we were supposed to end up today. We thank you for that grace and mercy that woke us up and allowed us to turn on those cell phones and those computers and those laptops to be able to receive your word today. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, and we bless your name. Today we are standing here in a renewed spirit. We know that things are going on in this country. We know that things are still not 100% where they're supposed to be. We've got more and more outbreaks still going on. We know that you're healing mercies are traveling throughout this nation right now, Father. We know that you're touching each and every one of those states that are starting to see the spikes. But we know that your hand will subdue that beast. We know that your hand will subdue the pain and ease their issues. We know that healing mercies are traveling out right now, Father. That you will touch each and every person that might be laying on a bed of affliction due to coronavirus, due to pneumonia, due to cancer, due to anything else that might be afflicting them right now. We know that you are protecting those that are still out there protesting, Father. We know that your hands are on them and keeping them safe right now. We know that you are putting your hands on those men who have to enforce the law of the land, Father. We know that you are putting your hands on them right now. Right thing, Father. We thank you for that today. Yes. Today we are coming and asking for special prayer, Father. Because we know well. that right now there's a lot of indecision going on in this country. We know that they're not sure whether or not the country is going to open up schools or not. We are asking that you touch the mind and hearts of those people who are so called in control. In control. We ask that you touch their minds and have them do the right thing. Have them do your will as you would have us to go. Allow your blessings to break in this country, Father. Allow your blessings to touch those who may not even know your name. To keep them safe anyway, Father. We ask all of these things. Today, right now, people are worried about all the things that are going on. That is a battle right now. We stand here and build them, speaking life into this country right now, Father. We speak life to those who are on that deathbed. We speak life to those who are not sure what's going on. We speak life to those who are afraid about what's going to happen tomorrow. For we know that death is up to tell me that we speak life, and we believe in what we say. All things are possible in your name. We are speaking all these things in your name today. Lord, 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 Lord,
if you would open your Bibles, again we are going to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, the third chapter. I know somebody's saying he can't get out of there, I can't get out until he let me out. Amen. 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 The Lord is good and he's worthy of all of his praises. As long as you do what the Lord says, everything will work according to all of his will and his way. Amen? Amen. We want to start at verse 1. Verse 1. Acts the third chapter, starting at verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together unto the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beauty, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, and with John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles and the bones receive strength. That in us ends the reading of our scripture this morning. And we're going to ask our choir, you may be seated, ask our choir to come in song and then we shall come back with the word. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Now 
fault. The condition we're in. My brothers and my sisters, when we look around at all of the things that are going on in our present time, in our present world, we are being conditioned to be afraid. The Bible says that God has given us the spirit of fear. We need to know that we walk by faith and not by, I wish I had help this morning, y'all know that, but not by sight. And everything that is going on around us is the devil trying to knock us, move us, shake us, and pull us out of our position that the Lord wants us to go into. And we need to know that in the midst of it, that the devil will put you in a position where you will be lame and you will be stationary because he does not want you to press towards the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. We are experiencing something that we have never seen before. We are feeling helpless because of this coronavirus is controlling us and as well there are those who choose not to follow or to do what it takes to change the course of what is happening. We feel as if we are stranded in the same place day after day asking for help in our condition. I don't know about you, but I've heard people say that they have lost track of days and time. It seems that the days seem to be the same. But I want you to know today that this is the day that the Lord has made. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. But while we got a chance, we ought to give. This is a new day. This is not like yesterday. This day is filled with blessings for each and every one of you. There are those who look at their condition and pass us right by. And there are those who will criticize our condition. Then there are those that are willing to make a change to our condition. There are, there are some things in this text that are not directly pointed out about this man that laid at the gate every day. The gate was called beautiful, and it is described as some 75 feet with made of a fine Corinthian brass. The other doors, the doors, uh, this particular door, excuse me, was a double door, and it was more beautiful than the other doors that were made of silver and gold. I want to stop and just tell you, you got to be careful of which door you choose to walk in. You got to be careful about which door you stand outside of. Every door is not going to lead you in the direction that God wants you to do. But, but the other doors, the other doors, let me describe it and make it plain for you, that the other doors were made of silver and gold. But this double door was made of fine Corinthian brass. Every now and then, we got to watch ourselves trying to be caught up by the silver and gold, the things that twinkle, the things that make us shine and make our eyes look towards them. That, that in the midst of it, I want you to know that while this door over here, silver and gold, may have one entrance, this door is double in its beauty and everything else. That there is a uniqueness about this door and where the situation takes place and the condition of this place. Not only does it take place there at this particular gate, but it occurs as a designated hour for this man that has been brought there every day to be blessed by God. It is a particular hour that Peter and John are going to show up. I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that Jesus shows up in your life at a particular time. He shows up and knows exactly what you need. We want one thing, but I want to give you this little tidbit right now. You need to know what Jesus wants for you. You need to know what Jesus has in store for you in your life. This time held a significant, a special significance uh, for them because it was the hour when Jesus cried out from the cross. It is finished. 
we would find that over in John 19 and 30. Uh, second, it offers the factor that it was a time of prayer. This man was there early and he went through all the hours of the day, seeking out in each and every one alms from those that went in and came out of the temple. It is that Peter and John were going, not going to the temple at the hour of sacrifice. But let me just say to you, my brothers and my sisters, there is a time in your life, there is an hour, there is a, a point set aside that you must learn to sacrifice. And there is a time and a place in which we must get on our knees and pray. And, and, and I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, this is a praying time. And when God removes us out of this virus, then it is a sacrifice time for what God has done for us. You see, people are more caught up in silver and gold. You heard them say, we got to get the economy back going again. We got to get, that's only the people who want more money in their pocket. What we really want is to be well. We don't want no virus coming in our life. We don't want no virus taking away our loved one. We don't want virus doing what it's doing. But we want Jesus to have his way. Listen to me, listen to me. That in the midst of it, that they entered not in at the time of sacrifice, but the hour of prayer. That followed the afternoon sacrifice. They realized that the sacrifice was already fulfilled in what Jesus had done on the cross. My brothers and my sisters, sometimes we think of the things that we do and we look at them as a sacrifice in order for us to be saved. But the truth of it is, Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. It is everything we do. When we bring our tithes and our offerings, it is simply what he asks us to do. But until we get to a point of where we're willing to give God all of our life, when we're willing to follow his will and his way to what he has told us in his word, then we are not sacrificing. We are just giving our trinkets in order for us to say to God, well, I gave you the best. No, you didn't give God the best. You got to give God all of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise, every living moment of your life. Let us look at this man's condition. This man's condition didn't just happen to him. Think about that for a second. Your condition didn't just happen to you then. Your condition has been in place for a while. This man or, or this man had not just bad luck along the way. Sometimes people will say, you know, I've been having bad luck along the way. Well, the truth of it is, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you don't have to believe in luck. You have to believe that he's going to bless me according to his riches. I, I wish I had help here. Y'all in here. He's going to bless me according to his riches. I don't have to fret when somebody else gets a blessing. I don't have to worry about when someone gets a house or a car and I didn't get it. But if I keep on trusting, I keep on believing, he's going to bless me according to his riches. Listen. Boy, this man's condition, the Bible says, started at his mother's womb. Born in the sin, shaped in to iniquity. This man was born into it. That, that's what we fail to understand sometimes. We are born into sin. We don't have sin in us, but we're born into sin. That, that means that when we come in, we come in pure, but what we do after we come in is how our life turns out. You see, the, the truth of the matter is that when people tell you, I'm trying to get my life together. No, you can't get your life together. But what you ought to do is turn your life completely over to the Lord and let him. Yeah. Yeah. And they're working out. We're shaped in iniquity. Yeah. That means the things around us is trying to guide us and move us and direct us. And when sin is what's guiding you and directing you, it further pushes you into 
a condition that you don't even realize it pushes you farther away from God. But the truth of it is that when we surround ourselves in God's glory and God's honor and God's praise, that's what directs us. That's what gives us our power. That's what picks us up when we're back. That's what wipes away our tears. That's what gives us strength to encourage others. Run on and see what the end will be. Secondly, because of this condition, had to be carried, because of his condition, he had to be carried every day to this place. My brothers and my sisters, we struggle in our condition because sin takes us to the same place every day. When you wake up in the morning, don't forget to pray. When you go through your day, don't forget to say thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Don't forget to surround yourself because sin will take you into misery. Sin will take you into lameness. Sin will put you away from what God wants from you. Some people, some conditions allow them to go beyond the gate. I need to stop right there. It's all right, it's all right. There are so many people who are still lost in sin. Yes, sir. And yet, my brothers and my sisters, they're stuck in that condition. Yeah. But today, the Lord got you up. Yeah. Started you on the way. Let you go beyond your sin. To let you understand what He's doing in your life. And for some people, we, we get the opportunity to enter into this place. We, we get the opportunity to give them praise. We, we get the opportunity to, to, to get to this situation. And yet there are those that come to the gate. And they stay on the outside. Now, now it doesn't give us a right. It doesn't give us a right to criticize those that have not made it through the gate. But it does give us the ability to try to help them to understand that you're in a condition and the only way that your condition will be made whole is that you must give yourself to Jesus. Oh, I wish I had a good amen right there. We may be able today to come in and ask for alms, ask for blessings inside of the temple, but it wasn't always that we had the ability to get in and to ask for alms. Let me say, I don't know about you, but I've come across some people in my life and they've said to me, you know, I go to church and this and that, and I say, well, you know, um, come on and pray. I, uh, I don't know how to pray. I say to him, what? what? What do you do when you get up in the morning? Do, do you thank? Do you say, Lord, thank you? Do you say thank you for waking me? Do you say thank you for my food? Do you, do you think, oh yeah, I do all of that? Well, then that's prayer. If it's sincere from your heart, if it's from your heart, the Lord will hear. And how many know He answers? Yeah. He answers prayer. And that in the midst of it, that when we get this opportunity, that, that we must realize that, that God is working our situation out. It is by God and Christ positioning us in our condition in order for us to receive our blessing and not be passed by. My brothers and my sisters, for every heartache that you went through, he positioned you to go through it and not stay in. But for every time that you didn't think you were going to make it, he positioned you so that in the midst of it, that he, it may have looked like you weren't going through, but he made a way out of nowhere for you. And yet sometimes it looked hard that it was going to be difficult to put food on your table, clothes on your back, shelter over your head, but he positioned you so that he could put shelter over your head, food on your table, and hold on. Can you, can you imagine how many people walked by this man who had become a fixture? 
minister at the gate called Beautiful, day in and day out. I said it before and I'll say it again. We've got to be careful how we walk about people. If we are God's people, if we are blessed, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, filled, somewhere along the line, we've got to help change their condition. The truth of it is, somebody helped you change your condition. Somebody told you about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody told you he'll pick you up, he'll clean you up, he'll turn you around, he'll give you a brand new. They say, we've got to stop disregarding each other's condition. We've got to stop disregarding the fact that there are people asking us for help. Yeah, yeah. We must be careful not to disregard others' condition when we have been blessed to be removed from our condition. Yeah. Nothing makes me mad, upset, put whatever word you want in it. When I see people that's been saved, and they want to talk about somebody else's condition. Hallelujah. They want to talk about what somebody else is doing. Yeah, right. And yet they've only been saved for a second. Yeah, right. Come on now. Say it. Come on. We got to be careful uh, and realize he's moved us from the outside of the gate. Yeah, yeah. And he's given us something in order for us to realize that there's a better way. For he had been, this man had been in this condition so long. All he wanted was arms which could only last for a day. Think about it. Every day, he went to the gate. They, they, they drug him, carried him, did whatever they did, just dumped him. At the gate. And every day he asked for alms. The next day he would be back at the gate asking for alms. My brothers and my sisters, we need to realize that by the grace of God, when we get up in the morning, he knows exactly what we need. And he deals with our situation according to his riches and glory. The lame man simply wanted to be supported in his condition. I'm just going to stop there for a second. Don't let nobody give you a pity party. Let me say that again. Don't let nobody, because when they give you one pity party, this happens, they want to give you another pity party. Because when they give you a pity party, then you become the center of what everybody's gossiping about. But how many you know my father is rich in houses and all the town all? This man just wanted to be supported in his condition. God has something better in mind for you and for me. Jesus wanted to completely change this man's condition. Of course, the lame man felt he had no other option than to be supported in his condition. My brothers and my sisters, I want to tell you today, you don't have to worry about being supported in your condition. For God wants better for you. For Christ died on Calvary's cross that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, don't get so caught up about the coronavirus. I want to tell you today that God's got it all under control. You do what you're supposed to do. And how many you know God's going to handle the situation? Yes. This man wanted to be supported in his condition. And it was certainly better for him to be supported than to, to, to starve to death. In addition, the man had good reason to believe that begging at the gate called beautiful could support him. There was an 
is a strong tradition of alms giving and giving to the poor, especially beggars in the, in the Judea uh, system, and, and, and it's doing as an act of righteousness. Let, let me say to you, the Bible says in Matthew 25, that, that if you do it unto the least of them, you, you do it unto me. I read that up and down. It didn't say anything about when you did. He said, but if you do it unto them, you do it. And when I come back, I will tell you, you, you fed the hungry and you pulled the wicked and, and you gave to those and you visited the sick and you did all those things. And when you do it out of what is God's glory and God's will, you won't even think about it because they said to him, when did we do that? When you did it unto the least of them, you, you did it unto me. <laughs> we must never, we must never turn our eyes away from the condition of others because it is turning ourselves away from our condition that we used to be in. Some people have faith that they were a sinner. I know some people in church. They will never tell you how a sinner saved by grace. They want you to know that I, I've been I've been walking with the Lord. You've been, no, the Lord been walking with you. You ain't always, I wish I could help y'all get right. You weren't always a deacon. You weren't always a preacher. You weren't always in the choir. You weren't always an usher. You weren't always coming to church. But you got to remember what the Lord has done for you. Yes. I don't have Peter and John as they were walking in. They, 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 they had that spirit about them and, and they fixed their eyes upon the lame man. And the text does not say whether uh, Peter and John had saw him before. But it says that this time that they fixed their eyes upon the lame man there. And in the midst of it, uh, let me approach the thoughts that, that some may have. Uh, some, when they look directly at this lame man, some in the midst of it will say, I don't have anything to give you. I, I gave them something last week. You know, when you gave somebody something before, that means you ain't got to do it no more. Uh, that is that in the midst of it, I, I gave them something when I saw them last time. And, and the question comes, what did they do with what I gave them before? When, where did they spend it at? Did, did they go get a bottle? Did they go get some drugs? That ain't your concern. What you do for the Lord, the Lord will. Stop using that as an excuse. It is not always about you giving materialistic things that you don't have yourself, but such as I do have. They may be expecting something from you. You can't give what you don't have. But if you think about this next point, it ought to bring some reality and perspective into sight for you. There was an expectation of the lame man to receive something from Peter and John. Yeah. Peter and John told him that they had not silver and gold to give him. But they said they had uh, something that was more precious. Yeah. Uh, if in fact we receive that which God gives us, he received much more than the monetary donation he would have been satisfied with. My brothers and my sisters, when we go, we look too much for the monetary thing. And if you don't bless you today, he blessed you already before. And sometimes we just gotta say, thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up in my right mind. Sometimes we gotta realize that the Lord is blessing us. Many have come to this place where they realize uh, expecting something from God. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you that when you walk in here, you're walking in to give God your glory. Give, give God your praise. Don't expect anything else because 
We're going to uh, join. Can you get that sanitizer over there next? And the wipes, if they're there, let, let your sister take one. All right. Come over here to the side door. Bring them over to the side. Amen. Every hand is a good hand working for the Lord. Amen. There are going to be sanitizer wipes. You can take one, squirt, whatever you want to do. Again, we want to exit. We want to go so that we can prep the church. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Brother Nichols, again, for all that you've done. Again, next week is First Sunday. Communion Sunday. This will be the first time that we've had communion back in the sanctuary. So again, we want to come and be here. When you enter in, you will be given your communion. So that when we get to that, it will already be served. We don't have to go through that formality again. So we want to be able to do that through our deacons and deaconess that are going to be present. And so again, we thank God for each of you. Look out for one another. Encourage those that are struggling through this virus that God is making a way for them. And that God is going to keep us. And he is going to move us beyond this situation, this condition. Amen. Ain't God good? Is he worthy of the praise that stand to our feet? Thank you. 